These five attractive things drive men crazy. If you're ready to learn what actually draws a man to you, what makes him see you as the woman he's meant to be with, that makes him crave and yearn to be with you, and also how to not push him away, have him reject you, choose another woman, or just simply lose interest and just want to be friends, then this video is going to be super important and helpful for you. So go ahead and comment below with I'm ready. If you're ready to know what a man is really emotionally committed to you or not, what makes him really love you, really attracted to you, we're going to be covering that in this video. Um, and hi, my name is Brody Boyd, if you don't know me already, and I've been helping single men for over 13 years to attract the right woman for them. So I have a unique perspective into the male brain. We're going to be talking about more in this video. So if you like anything in this video, my background, my shirt, the content, anything at all, go ahead and give it a thumbs up right now. I'd really appreciate it. Give it a like. And also make sure to subscribe and hit the bell below for more videos on how to attract a man for a happy relationship. Also comment, I subscribe so I know who's joining us. Love to hear that. And also make sure to share this video with a girlfriend or two who you think could really benefit from this valuable info. And also make sure to watch the video all the way through to get a special tip on how to know if he really loves you. So without further ado, let's go ahead and start diving right in. Powerful secret number five, uh, what makes a man attract to you is being a queen, being a queen. So this is a term uh, we use here that is generally referring to a woman who a man is both respected to, but he's also drawn to. And that's the key. If you want a man to be attracted to you and a way that he's attracted to you as a partner, not just as somebody to have sex with, somebody to have short-term fling with, then you want to be holding this energy of the queen. So what is a queen? A queen is a perfect balance. So if you imagine two ends of the spectrum, you might have on one end, you might have a bitch, we like to say, or just a really uh, aggressive, masculine, um, avoidant woman, someone who pushes people away. Excuse the term. Uh, we could use another term just like um, an avoidant woman, I guess. There's not really a word that captures that, that essence uh, as much. And then, and I want it to actually be uh, aggravating because then you can see it when within yourself when when it's there. On the other side, we have what's called the doormat, and this is a woman who's very people pleasing, uh, anxious, texting all the time, sacrificing herself and her desires to be with a man, uh, getting him to like her, and she's doing whatever it takes to get him to like her. So you have two opposites, you might say, of the spectrum here. Now the queen is actually the perfect merging of both of those. So she's taking the good from. Uh, over here, the bitch, you would say, she's taking the good traits of those from her, the assertiveness, the uh, maybe you might say courage, the um, self, uh, taking care of herself, respecting herself, healthy balance of, uh, of uh, she's more, um, it has, a, has an independent aspect to her. And then the, the doormat, which is very needy and, um, and is very, um, oh, so the good aspects of the doormat is that she cares, she's compassionate, she has a heart. She's open. She's probably more feminine. Um, so you want to take both of those aspects, merging them together. What do you get? You get the queen with the crown on top, which means you respect yourself, you value yourself, and you're actually you're not independent. You're not independent, nor are you dependent. You are interdependent. So you are able to be with a man and have time for yourself, and set boundaries, and be vulnerable, and be compassionate, and be um, graceful, have poise and uh, take care of yourself, dress well, look good. All those things is wrapped up into the queen, which is being a high value woman, a woman who values herself, who is valuable to a man to see as a long-term potential. So that is gonna be super powerful for you. And that's one thing that men are super attracted to, especially when looking for a long-term partner. Number four is femininity. Now, femininity is all about you letting your hair down. Um, it's about you relaxing, being receptive, having a feminine glow. It's about you being open, giggly, playing with your hair, batting your eyelashes, all those kind of traditional things that your uh, your grandma, great grandma probably did to attract their husbands. You know, it's that traditional femininity. It's that innocence. It's that um, gracefulness. It's the play. It is the curiosity. It is the flow. It's the creativity. It's the openness, it's the spontaneity, it's the pink frilly dresses. It's everything that is the opposite of masculinity. It's everything the opposite of being structured, strong, independent, getting things done, um, leadership, telling people what to do. It's the opposite of all that. 
Now that is super magnetic on a biological level to a male member of the species because what it shows is a maternity, uh, a nurturingness, uh, an ability to have children together, to raise a family together, to have that division of labor of uh, different roles within the relationship, within the family that is so attractive because that's what continues the species, that's what continues life. And so you're literally saying yes to life when you're embracing your femininity, when you're embodying that, when you're letting it pour from every cell in your body. Men can smell it, they can see it, they can sense it, and they want to be around it. They're craving it, especially masculine men, masculine men who are the protectors, the providers, who want to take care of you, who want to protect you, who want to look after you, who want to do things for you, who want to invest, who want to chase you and pursue you, who want to treat you like a queen, treat you like a princess. So those are the super important traits if you want to attract a man that you want to look for with femininity, you want to embody with femininity. So if you're liking this content so far, oh, actually, sorry, I'm, I want to first here before we go into that. What country or state are you coming, calling from or watching from? What state or country? I'd love to hear where you're watching from. So I'm always curious where our audience is. It's really uh, great for me to hear that. So please share in the comments. Number three is making him feel masculine. So this isn't just about embodying the feminine. This is taking it to the next level. This is about you actively helping him to step into his king, to be your queen, to be your king for your queen. It's calling him into his hero, calling him into his protector, his provider, his leader, his confident masculine um, uh, presence. So you can do that in a variety of ways. That can be through how you communicate to him saying things like calling him your hero, calling him your your protector, your provider, telling him you feel safe when you're around him, that it's so sexy when he takes takes charge or so sexy when he's looking out for things and getting things handled and planning out the date or pulling out the chair for you, opening the door. Call him into that because he's going to become addicted to that. Men want to become their best version of themselves. They want to embody their masculine power. For the most part, men want to step into that. And when you help them, when you encourage them, and you, when you help him feel that and let him know it's okay, let him know that you think it's sexy, attractive, um, that you love it, he's going to want to do that more. And he's going to become more of a masculine man. He's going to get addicted to being around you because you pull him into a better version of himself and you help create that masculine feminine polarity, which is really the only thing that creates long-term attraction, chemistry, and passion. So you pull him into that, pen that, that polarity where the opposites attract, the energies attract, and now you guys are having all these sparks flying off. You're having all this juicy attraction, and it's going to make him start to crave your presence, possibly even become obsessed with you because um, that energy becomes so addictive. And uh, it'll definitely make him start to fall in love as well. So really powerful with that. Number two is confidence, confidence. So men do love a confident woman. They want you to be valuing yourself. Talking about the queen earlier, it's about you setting boundaries, speaking up when you need to, telling him what you desire, not making him wrong, not criticizing him, but letting him know when there is something that you love that he does or something that you're wanting him to do. Do it in a graceful way. Use appreciation, use compliments first. Compliment him, say, you know, I love how you're always, uh, you know, showing up on time or I love how you are such a good listener or I love how you are um, taking care of things around the house or whatever. And I I would love it if you could call me a little bit more often or I love it if we could hang out at least once a week because that's what I'm really wanting in a in someone that I'm, I'm having a serious romantic connection with or, or starting to explore deeper connection and uh, let him just have that and he either steps up to the plate or he may not and he may say you know i'm not ready for that yet or that's not where i'm at wanting and then you know and then you can move on so the right guy can step in and be that for you um so it's really important to have the confidence to speak up to believe in yourself to value yourself to know that you are any man would be lucky to be with you that you are the prize you are a gift and you are highly sought after so that all comes with that confident energy so now if you like this content, make sure to like, share, and subscribe below for more great videos like this. If you're liking what you're learning so far, make sure you get more. Make sure you get our new videos with more advanced te techniques coming up. Like, comment, uh, like, and subscribe. I would really appreciate that. Number one is a radiant smile. And so this uh, book I read years ago um, called like How to Make Someone Fall in Love or How to Make Them Like You, she talked about the, the flooding smile, the flooding smile. So it's when you kind of have a f smile that 
that just spreads across your face very slowly, very gently. And uh, it's like the good kind of pandemic. It's a good kind of spreading. It just goes all across your face and very, very gradually. That is what you want. That is how you attract a man to you because that flooding smile, that radiant smile is seductive. It is attractive. It is magnetic and use it often. It's a weapon that you can wield on the heart of a man to make him crumble before you in desperate pleas of longing, love, and devotion. So use that radiant smile. It's gonna really help you, and it's a practice. I used to practice smiling in the mirror because I was so not used to it, and I was always in my own world. So I would practice smiling in the mirror and just, just to get myself in the habit so when I would go out, I'd be more used to it because obviously it works both ways. People are generally attracted to people who smile. It's an attractive thing, but uh, especially as as you wanting to attract a masculine man, uh, that will be very important as well to to practice that radiance. Practice your beauty going out towards the world as a gift. Now, before I share my bonus secret, go ahead and comment below which of these have you used with a guy that you've been interested in before, and what was the result? I'd really love to hear that. Was it the smile, the confidence, setting boundaries, being feminine, being the queen, making him feel masculine? Which of these have you tried, and how was that working with him or with a man that you were dating or not? Now, for our bonus secret here, this is one thing that also makes a man fall in love, is being vulnerable and open. So this is all about sharing things you may be a little scared to share, such as when you're feeling afraid, when you're feeling angry, when you're feeling happy, when you're feeling joyful. Um, let him know, share those things, share about what's going on inside of you. Now, you have to be careful with this because it's very easy to say like, you're making me feel angry right now, or you made me, uh, you did this to me, or why did you do that, or you're, you, you, you're screwed it up. Um, so rather than sharing those kind of things, share how it made you feel, share the emotions and share things like, um, you know, I'm scared. I feel scared that, you know, we're not going to work out or I feel scared that it's uh, that you're that you're you might hurt me at some point or I feel um, I feel really, uh, really happy when we spend time together or I feel really sad when you said that thing to my to my mom. It just made me feel sad like you don't care. And just let it sit. Just let him know those things. Now, you could take it to other levels as well, sharing your childhood, sharing things that you love, things that you that you are um, maybe, maybe scared about, upset about. Um, it's really what it is for you, too. Whatever makes you feel slightly uncomfortable to share. So it's like stretching yourself. It's going to feel scary. Otherwise, it's not really vulnerable to share something. We used to do an exercise when we led our workshops uh, in our partner attraction workshops, we used to have this exercise where we would say, one, we would do an exercise between men and women, and you, they would have to share, one thing I don't want you to know about me is, and they would share something they don't want them to know about them. And that's vulnerable. That's scary to say something like, I don't want you to know that I'm actually terrified, or I'm actually struggle with an anxiety disorder, or I'm actually, um, uh, I've actually, you know, had abuse in the past, or whatever it might be for you. Again, you don't want to also dump onto a man. You don't want to just throw this stuff onto him. So you can kind of gauge it at the stage of the relationship that you're at right now. But you can do this even early on when you first meet a man and share something that's slightly vulnerable and say, um, you know, you really remind me of my dad. And he used to do this as well. And um, I really I, I really admire that trait about you. Or um, ask him about what was his relationship like with his father or his mother and then share the same for you. So... There was a study that was done where people would share questions with each other and they would progressively get more vulnerable. And at the end, they found that most people who shared would actually have feelings of love for the other person. So vulnerable questions are actually scientifically proven to develop intimacy. Questions and answers, they develop intimacy and they develop a strong connection. And openness is also about being honest, being vulnerable, being uh, truthful with him, where you're at, where you're not at, what you're wanting, what you're not wanting. Men are not mind readers, and they need you to often share with them what those things are so they can actually meet you there. And it's very attractive because it shows he can trust you. It shows that he that you're feminine, that you're open, you're honest, um, and he can feel your heart and know who you really are, not that you're pretending to be somebody else or that you're protecting yourself from getting hurt. Because, yeah, we all don't want to get hurt, but if you don't open up your heart, you can never let that love in. And, and often by showing up your heart, that's encouraging him to show his as well. 
So it's a gradual thing. You start to stretch it the more you're in a relationship with a man, but you want to try that using that from the very beginning because it's really going to help you uh, draw him in. So if this was helpful for you, go ahead and discover how to attract a man for a long-term commitment for free by taking our Magnetize Your Man quiz. You can go to mymquiz.com right now, or you will put a link below, m uh, mymquiz.com. Take our free quiz. You'll learn how to attract a man specifically for your situation, get some free gifts and resources, and it's really powerful and also helps you to get more self-awareness on your journey as well towards attracting the man that you want. So mymquiz.com for that. And next, I highly recommend, if you haven't seen my new video, my, my video I made actually a couple of weeks ago, um, when a man deeply loves you, he'll start saying these things. So when a man is falling in love, when he's in the later stages, these are the kinds of words he's going to say to you to really, um, that you'll know that he's really falling in love. So get that video, click over here. I'll put it over here and it's going to be very um, valuable to you if you haven't seen it yet. Or again, subscribe and watch more of our videos that we have available. There'll be some listed on the side of the video as well, most likely, or below. And, uh, get more insights into attracting men and how men think and how to create the relationship that you really want. So much love, hope that was helpful, and I'll talk to you again very soon.